Hello everyone, I'm so happy we finally have the first ever VidConf. So today I would like to talk about Vid, the on-demand developer experience. It's about how Vid becomes great using the mindset of on-demand. My name is Anthony Fu and I'm a coding member of Vid, Vue, and Nux. I'm also a creator of Vitas, Vue Use, Uno CSS, Slidev, and Unplugging. I'm currently working at Nux Labs in the framework team. And if you prefer visually, these are their icons. So you can find me on GitHub at ANTFU or Twitter at MTFU7. So before we dive into on demand, let's first see what the heck the on demand is. So this was my childhood. Back at that time, um, let's say when I want to watch a movie, I need to download the whole files in order to play it. It's not really taking 39 years to download, but indeed it could take a few hours. And it could be a nightmare if I want to pick a good ones out of a dozen of movies. So nowadays, thanks for the on-demand streaming service like YouTube or Netflix, our lives becomes much easier. So if I have to give a definition to on-demand, I would say, provide what you need upon the request. Compared to the traditional all-at-once approach, I think on-demand is offering a few pros. The first is efficient, is that you only load the parts you need. And the second one is responsive and customizable. For example, if you are watching the same movies on two different devices, the one on your phone will get lower resolution streams than your desktop since it has a smaller screen, screen to consume. That would make things more efficient. And then we could find that the web itself is actually also on demand. That makes the total sense for a build tool to also doing so. But things are not perfect. Indeed, it comes with some comes. The first is overhead like network, request water flows, etc. For example, in a very poor network connection, it will be a terrible experience to watch your YouTube videos online, right? And, then, and the second one is the complexity. It requires actual work to implement and in maintain the functionality of on-demand. Since there is no silver bullet, let's see how Vite made those trade-offs. We are talking about on-demand in a few different aspects. The first and probably the most well-known one is that Vite is on-demand on processing. Vite only transpiles the modules you need for the request pages, or so-called bundle this. This allows Vite to keep fast as your project grows. And the second one, I would like to call it on-demand on strategies. We actually have different needs on development and production. In development, we are changing our code constantly, and having a good feedback loop will be important to see the changes, and that will be developer experience. And in production, we are more focusing on the runtime performance and the size of the bundle, and that will be user experience. So Vite provides two different modes, dev and build, to provide the best to the both world. So in development, Vite is offering bundle layers, hot module replacement, and the dev server to make those things happen on demand. On the other hand, in production, Vite is actually using Rollup to bundle the app and providing optimizations like tree shaking, code splitting, and minification. On top of that, even though there are two different strategies, we still make it consistent by providing a shared configuration and plugin system. By taking it further, we could have on-demand on optimization. If Vite could provide different strategies on different targets, we could actually have more fine-grained strategies on different type of files. We could separate the project code into user code and the node modules you installed from the third party. So Vit made the assumptions that is that the user code will be changes uh, frequently while the node modules will be only changed once a while. Taking that assumption, Vit serves user code per module as bundleless while pre-bundling the node modules into a single file that browser could consume more efficiently. And Vit injecting the code for hard module replacement for user code while skipping it in node modules. And finally, the bonus of on-demand. The customizability. Vit is using adapt servers in development. That means 
plugins could use it to do some client-server communication. For example, here are the pages provided by Vit Plugin Inspect, an inspector of Vit internal transformation. Here we could see um, um, a view file is being transformed by a few plugins, and you can see the each step of the plugin being transformed. And here the view, the view single file component is being transformed into JavaScript, and the import analyze changes the um, the import statements into a browser compatible path. And the slides you are looking at is actually powered by SlideDip, which is on top of Vit. By using the client server communication, it allows you to directly write back to the file system inside a page. For example, I can open up the building editor of SlideDip, and I can say that change the title into orange. And when it, and you can see that the change is being, uh, being reflected instantly. So since Vit providing a lot of things on demand, I would like to encourage plugin authors to also build integrations with on-demand in mind. For example, in Nux, we are building a full-stack framework for Vue, and indeed, we need server-side rendering. Since Node.js cannot directly understand our source code authoring in TypeScript or Vue SFC, the traditional approach is that we bundle our app into plain JavaScript for Node.js to execute and render. The problem is that in development time server-side renderings, our source code are changes frequently. And that means we have to rebuild the entire bundles and re-execute it on every single changes we made. And that would be very inefficient in on-demand systems that like Vit. So we better figure out a better way to do that. In X3, we implement the on-demand server-side rendering for Vit by introducing a new Vit runtime called VitNode. Instead of bundling the entire app, Vnode directly used the transform result from the Vit server and execute them on demand. It also made it possible for hard module replacement by only re-executing the changed modules. This result knocks to have 10 to 50 times faster performance on development depending on the scale of the project. About the technical details of this, you can refer to my blog post as the link below. And finally, let's do a brief introduction to VNode. VNode is a Node.js runtime powered by Vite pipeline. It provides on-demand evaluations, and it could reuse Vite configurations, plugins, etc. to be consistent with your client app. Inherent from Vite, it also has out-of-box ESM and TypeScript support. It also has a watch mode with hard module replacement similar to node mode. And for pro programmatically usage, it has separate server client architecture so that you can execute the code from the other thread or even another process. Vino is now powering Nux3's development time server-side rendering and also make Vitesse, the testing framework on Vite, possible. It also powers History, the storybook alternative on Vite and view Termi UI, their terminal UIs for Vue. To demo about how Vit make Nux possible, I would highly recommend you to watch the upcoming talk by Daniel. And for Vit, you definitely don't want to miss the talk by Vermeer, one of the core team members of Vitesse. And that's it for today. Finally, I would like to thank for all my sponsors for supporting my work. And if you enjoy my works as well, you can consider sponsoring me at GitHub to help me keep them sustainable. The slides of my talk can be found on my website, ntfu.me. Thank you, and see you next time.